Sri Lanka, Sammy. I'm back, baby. Look at, wow. I have never seen the water so clear. Look at how beautiful it is today. And the water's so warm. It's a little overcast today. It is a Tuesday, um, 12 noon. And as you can see, the beach is empty. Compared to when I was out here last time on the weekend. And all the boats, the ships are gone. There was, there was, there was two big military ships. And then yesterday, when I was coming by, there was a huge tanker here. And that's gone. You know, one of the things I would love to live out here is to see all the big ships coming by in and out. So, today I'm going to talk to you about why did I leave Canada? Why did I? I got asked this, you know, because I had a really good job. Um, I was an executive making quarter of a million a year. And why did I leave that and come to South Korea working as a teacher? Why did it uh, stand by, come back, and after this message, we'll find out. Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you for subscribing, for watching, for liking, for sharing. I really, really appreciate it. If you could please just watch one of the commercials, that would really help me out. Uh, as well, if you, if you wanna subscribe, I appreciate that and click that like button. I do appreciate that. You, you know, I send them my love to you guys all for supporting the channel. If you really wanna support, join me on the weekends when I have my live stream on Saturdays or Sundays. I'm gonna start them on Sundays, maybe on Saturday. Keep an eye out on posts that I make uh, telling you when the next one will be. Usually Sunday afternoons or Saturday afternoons, Filipino time, 2 p.m., where I will do the uh, live chat. So why did I leave Canada? What was the main reason? Why did I leave a good job and come here? leave a job that was full-time, uh, guaranteed income, benefits, and all that wonderful stuff that your family, your friends, and society tells you to do. Why did I give all of that up to become a freelancer where I have to pay my own medical, I have no unemployment insurance, I get no days off, I got no guarantees, no guaranteed income, and there's lots of stress. Sorry, there's there, there's different kinds of stress. So that's what I'm gonna talk about. The number one reason was stress. I lived a very stressful life. I just wanted to show you that one apartment. Look at that one up there. I don't know if you can see it. It's that apartment up there. It's a luxury three-story house, and it's got a patio, and everything. I'm gonna take a picture of that on the way back. That is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen here on the beach. So when I was in Canada from 1988, 1986 till 2007, I was working in the telecom industry. Um, I ended up at Bell Canada after jumping around a little bit. I spent three months at Rogers and sorry, uh, three months at TELUS and then a few months at Rogers. So I worked at all three, the big three, but Bell Canada was the one I spent 20 years at. And let me tell you, it was a great job in the beginning. I absolutely loved my job. I enjoyed the work, the money. I enjoyed the work. I loved going to work in the morning. 
you know, Sundays I would couldn't sleep because I was thinking about going to work on Monday. I loved it that much. And uh, the people I was with is like, they couldn't understand it. They were like, how do you love that job so much? Because I was naturally good at it. That was the thing. I was naturally good at being a salesman. The money was amazing. Back in the days of analog to digital, I was making huge commissions because they were paying ridiculous amounts of money. It was a monopoly or ogopoly. And it was just easy money to be made. And if you worked smart, you would, you would make a killing. I, I, I was number one salesperson so many times. Trip to Bahamas, trip to Paris, Las Vegas, cruises, uh, compute laptops and computers. Hi, how are you? Uh, not today. Next time, okay? Oh, beautiful. So, thank you. So, um, I, uh, I, I made good money. I got lots of great bonuses. I mean, the salary is not what I cared about. I cared about the commission because that's where I made my money. I made my money on the commission. So, hey guys, what's, what's, what's going on? What's, what's going on? Why is everybody watching? He's going to do something funny? Ah, okay. <laughs> so, I am, uh, I'm working my, I'm working in Canada. I'm doing well, getting promoted. And, you know, did the house, did the cars, did the two houses, did the two cars, got married, did all that. The only thing I didn't do was have kids which is a thing that I'm so glad I didn't do. That would have cost me a pretty penny. 2007 got divorced and I was not happy with my job. I hated my job. Hold on a second, let me just wash my feet, and get back on the road, because this is the end of the beach. The beach ends right here, so I have to go out onto the road. So walking along the beach, you come out at Blue Rock, which is at the end of Balloy Beach Road. So. You know, this is a road I normally walk along, but it, since it's so hot, I figured I'd walk along the beach, get my feet wet. So anyway, I had to. I have to head over to the corner store, pick up some sugar and 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 other stuff. Anyway, so I think the number one reason I left is because I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy with the American dream, having a good job, being married, and all of that. Was not happy, that was not me. I needed to travel, I needed to get out of Canada. And the other thing was, I wasn't happy with Canadian politics at the time. So much multiculturalism, so much drama, and just too much stuff going on that I didn't agree with. So, it wasn't a decision to come to Korea, it was a decision to get out of Canada. So I quit my job, took a package, and I didn't know what I was going to do. So I was working for a startup company for a short time, made some really good money there. And again, I wasn't happy. Then um, the financial crisis happened and that put, you know, sales in a downturn you couldn't sell ice in in texas so um it was it was really hard so the stresses that was number two the stress the stress of trying to make money from a boss who wants you to make more and more money for them right and you're working 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 in an impossible situation which they say it's not their problem, it's yours, because you're paid to do that. No consideration. So, yeah, stress. Add to that the fact that, you know, 
at that point I'm paying two apartments because I'm divorced at that time and the costs of my bills etc etc so it wasn't easy so yeah stress was number two and number three just you know I needed something new I had been doing that work for my whole life and I felt no accomplishment so I needed to do something new I needed to find I guess I mean the the old saying is go find yourself right so I needed to go find myself and the idea of going to Korea was from a friend of mine longtime friend maybe 20 years who was in Korea at the time I was 39 at the time I had met her when I was in my 20s so maybe 15 years 20 years she was my friend Korean Korean Canadian so she was in Korea with her boyfriend and uh, said yeah you can make decent money here just come out we'll help you and I'm like who can not say no to an offer like that where you're properly taken care of help so that's what I did what are these guys doing Let's go see what they're doing. <laughs> Having fun. So I think they're picking mangoes. What are you guys doing? Picking mangoes? Yeah. Ah. Is it good? Did you get one? No, no, no. Is it good to eat? Yes. It's good to eat? Yes. All right. Enjoy. Have Can fun. No, no. Later. Thank you. Thank you. So they're picking mangoes from the tree there. Anyway. So I ended up uh, <clears throat> leaving and of course I paid off all my debts and I arrived in Korea with I think it was about $50,000 which was enough for me to get an apartment and in Korea when you do chunse, you, uh, you don't have to pay monthly rent. You pay a huge deposit and then uh, then you get your money back or you pay key money which is a smaller deposit and you pay a little bit of rent per month I can't remember what I did in the beginning because it's secured right so anyway I, had, I did a whole video on Chonsei you guys can look that up on my channel so when I came to Korea and I worked I was making good money because I had no debt I had no bills and I've talked about this before what I the mistakes I made working was I only worked enough to pay my bills I didn't save. could have should have over the 10 years I was working uh, prior to COVID was I should have saved and worked harder so yeah let me uh, go do my shopping and I'll come right back to you guys yeah so let's wrap up today's story and just you know if you have no anchors, if you have no commitments, it's so easy to get up and go. And that's what I did. Basically, I got up and got. And, oh, it's so hot today. Man, oh man, it's so hot today. Uh, picked up some cool drinks. I'm gonna go home, get some ice, some refreshing. What is, so many bugs. Anyway, um, just to recap, the, uh, uh, it was money, stress, drama, politics, cost of living, all of those things that you hear about. And I think the number one thing that allowed me to do it, and I said it just a moment ago, was the fact that I had no anchors. I had nothing holding me here. So I could just get up and go. And that's what I did. I got up and got. So. This is Sri Lanka Sammy saying thank you everyone for watching, liking, sharing, commenting. Um, come to the Philippines. Enjoy life. Learn to live life. Don't let life live you. Sri Lanka Sammy. Sammy in Supik. I am out.